Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the second Monday of the month, which means it's time for Plant-Based Classics with Lauren Burnick. And today, she is going to be taking recipes that you would find at Panda Express and veganizing them and making them oil-free and delicious. Please welcome, as she reinvents the classics, Lauren Burnick. It's such a fun concept, this show. Hello. Hello. Yes, thank you. Hello. Hello. You, you always have the best wardrobe. Where do you get your clothes? This I got at uh, Austin Pets Alive Thrift Shop. So I try to thrift, you know, so that, I mean, I don't get all my clothes at thrift, but I take, I clean out my closet a lot. I don't like to have a lot of clothes. Um, I'm an anti-hoarder, and so I'm always cleaning out my closet, so I always go into the Austin Pets Alive thrift shop, which supports the, you know, the animal shelter where I got my beast of a dog, and, you know, I'm always looking through the clothes there. I think this was $6, so. Well, you have such a great sense of style, both with food and clothes. You always look so well put together. Thank you, and this necklace my youngest made for me, my punk rocker kid made for me. That's so cool. Well, yeah. you know, I used to love Panda Express when I was just a regular vegan before I was oil free. Right. And so I would eat there and I loved the, um, they had like a, I think some kind of tofu dish. And then I found out that they actually use chicken broth and not veggie broth. Oh, that's so maddening. They, you know, there's a Mexican restaurant here in town. Uh, that advertised something as vegan. And then people found out they were using like chicken fat to cook the chips in or something, which was, you know, unfortunate for them. Luckily I stay away from the, from the oil. So I didn't ever have that problem, but man, that's just so, I, that's mean. It's mean unnecessary. Or ignorant or mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. It's really so. unnecessary because, you know, even cooking in water, if you have the right seasonings, you know, people think, oh, it won't taste good without broth. Right. I mean, I, I don't think I use broth in any of my recipes because I use so much flavor and spices in my soup. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to pay, you know, $4 a box. Right. Yeah. I mean, I use water a lot. Sometimes I do use broth, but honestly, the only thing I know of for sure uh, that I don't use broth in is when I do my chili. I do a beer. (laughs) So I use a Texas beer for my Texas chili. But other than that, I generally use water as well. You're right, because it has all the flavors. So you don't have to do it. I don't know if it's the perspective or is that literally the biggest head of cauliflower Texas size? It is a big cauliflower. You know, I, I've made this a couple of times getting ready and um, I just keep thinking that's not enough. I mean, yeah, I can eat a lot and I could probably eat this in one sitting, to be honest. I would try not to, but it cooks down. It gets a lot smaller. So it looks literally bigger than your head. It bigger than my face. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big face of cauliflower. We're going to start you know, calling it Cauliflower face. used to be so just, um, people weren't really eating it and it just got so popular over the past few years with cauliflower pizza and you know cauliflower wings and I I've always liked it because it's a very neutral vegetable yeah it's like tofu I know you don't cook with tofu but um but it is it takes on the flavor of whatever you're making so that's what makes it so good um I'm gonna make this primarily with cauliflower but I also have a tofu recipe you can make that's the same sauce And you make the, instead of cauliflower, you make tofu. It's crispier. And so some people might prefer that, but we're going to focus on the cauliflower. We'll batter up the tofu and I'll show you that. The sauce is the same. So you can either make orange cauliflower or orange tofu, just depending on what you like. You know, I like options. So I'll give you those. You you know, if you keep doing Chef AJ Live long enough, you're going to have enough recipes for a cookbook, which will be called Plant-Based Classics with Lauren Burnick. I know. Oh, inspired by Chef AJ. Well, I'll write the foreword. I mean, because oh. I just think it's such a great idea. We just need to make a list of what other people think of as classics. And you've already yeah. done so many of them, French onion soup. You know, I mean, there's just so many things. And, you know, mac and cheese. They, these are the things yeah. people, you know, beef, beef bourguignon or whatever. Beef bourguignon. Well, I did my beef, beefless stew. And that's, you know, I looked up uh, trying to do beef Bourguignon, but I was like, this is really just essentially my B 
beefless stew recipe with some minor changes. So yeah, the, it and by classics, you know, we've talked about this before. I don't mean like the Julia Child classics. I mean like, what did you used to eat before you went whole food plant based? What did you like? Exactly. Serving up the hits. I don't really like, I mean, not that I don't like, but I don't need recipes to have serving sizes or calories or fat, right. but it might be fun to say, like, you know, saying, you know, traditional mac and cheese has, you know, 94 grams of fat and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And my, you know, it, just, just because people don't, yeah. realize, you know, I make a strawberry shake. I posted it recently on that. social media. It's delicious. It's Kathy Hester, who has a, another show on yeah, this, yeah. this Wednesday of the month. And just Love for her. kicks and giggles, I never count calories because I'm terrible at math, but just for kicks and giggles. I put it into, there's this, this thing you can get like a recipe calculator, right? And I put it in. And so this shake makes two nice servings in a big milkshake glass. Right. And it, Kathy Hester's strawberry shake, which tastes just like, a, I don't want to even say their name, a fast yeah. food restaurant strawberry shake, because strawberry is my favorite flavor, had these two servings had less calories than one at the fast food restaurant. And the fast oh, wow. food restaurant was like 60 grams of fat. This had I don't know, like three, because there was a, a half a tablespoon of chia seeds in or, you know, something like that. It's wow. just crazy. People don't realize how many, many calories and fat are in standard American food or even, even you know, vegan food that's not made uh, right. without oil. It's ridiculous. I know. Yeah, we've talked about it before. Like before I started eating this way, I thought I was eating really healthy. And then I lost 20 pounds in like three months so easily. And I had been fighting, you know, that little bit of weight for, my whole adult life and it just fell off and now I don't like you I don't count calories but it, right. I don't have to worry about it anymore it's really it, it just same thing happened to my husband out. my husband was always already always lean but we stopped oil and he didn't even know I didn't tell him and he dropped so much weight it's so calorically dense and if guys if it you're is. eating at restaurants it's almost impossible to avoid it truly truly yep yeah. It is. And you look really cute. I like your outfit, oh, by the way. Well, thank you. I'm just the hat girl, you know. <laughs> you are. You're cute, cute, <laughs> cute. Thank you. Um, okay, well, I'll get started. Let me see. Okay, so you know me. I always have to use my recipe right here. So, all right, you know, with the cauliflower, it's easy. All you do first, I guess, let me do this since I have it. Um, you just cut out this big, well, I don't know if I'm teaching you the right way. I'm just teaching you the way I do it. Just get out this big core in the middle, and then everything kind of falls apart after that. I've already washed it. Of course, you can get the, whoop, don't go anywhere. Yeah, if you somebody wanted the, to, they could get the florets if they wanted to. Exactly. You could just get the bagged. You know what I found the other day was um, at Costco, they had a giant bag. So in the recipe, I say if you're using the little bags from the grocery store, use three of them. But I'm not talking about the Costco bag because I found a big, giant, like, bag of pre-done cauliflower. But it's so easy and, you know, it's more economical. You can get a big, giant one like this. I feel like those – and then I just kind of tear it apart. I don't even use my knife for the rest of it. My dog has been locked away so that she doesn't bark. But normally when she knows I'm doing cauliflower, she's, like, right under me because some always falls on the floor. And this is one of her favorites. You could um, you could probably give her the core, right? Yeah, I give her everything. Nice. Yeah, I do. I give her the core. She loves it. But you yeah, know, a I lot of people don't hurt. realize you can eat the green leaves that are on the bottom, especially when you steam them. They're quite delicious. What are they? I've never eaten them. What do they taste like? Just They're just really good because when I make my cauliflower bisque, I put the whole thing in the pressure cooker oh. and I eat the little green. I mean, it's either blended or I eat it. It's very good. I'm going to try that next time. I got to use my... Uh, my pressure cooker more my what do you call it instapot Instant i have not pot, been good yeah. but you know what i did get i got my husband got me for my birthday i got a ninja creamy and i have oh, been using it that's a one i like you, it well then you can reinvent an ice cream classic like uh rock yeah. road or something you know yeah you know what i made the other day is um i'm working with recipes but and i just got the basic one i was gonna get the deluxe one but they were out of stock and i really wanted it but I think the basic is just fine. No, the basic is fine. The only difference really, in my opinion, is that the, the deluxe makes a little bit more product, you know? Right. But it's taken me so long just to eat one. What is it? A pint, I guess? Yeah, that's true. If you're, yeah. especially if you're the only one eating it, the, 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 yeah. the one is fine. Sure. And I, I made some chocolate for my husband because he eats Ben and Jerry's and he doesn't even eat the 
non-dairy one. He's really cut out most dairy, except for cheese pizza and Ben and Jerry's, which are two big ones. But anyway, um, he even, he liked the chocolate one I made him. He said it needed more sugar. So next time I'll make him more sugar, or maybe put chocolate chips in it. But I made, um, I used peanut butter. I made kind of a vanilla base and then I used peanut butter powder and something else. I can't, well, it came out so good with the peanut butter powder. Okay, so now you can see I have this giant mound of cauliflower and that took really no time. Um, and now we're just gonna make up, I, I can't decide whether to call this like a base or a marinade. Let me get a big bowl, another big bowl. Um, I like big bowls and I cannot lie. I like big bowls. <laughs> You're a little bit funny. You're super funny, actually. Uh, that's cool. I go to comedy class and I want you Ooh. to come with me. It's Let's so go fun. To comedy school. I know. I should go, I guess. You could start this a vegan comedy school. Oh, God. Okay. One third of Bragg liquid aminos, Tamari coconut aminos. Um, you know, I don't know if I, oh, this is a half cup. Well, hell, I was like, this is a big third cup. Maybe I should put my glasses on. Um, yeah, I don't know. My, I might do it with you. Uh, we shall see. Actually, I'm going to do it in this bowl because it has a lid. And then I can shake it up. Okay, so a third cup of Bragg liquid amino, two tablespoons of rice vinegar. Just think it's so unusual doing comedy on Zoom. It's like the club is like, oh no, it's a different, a different beast. No, it is. It really is. But it's a, hey, you can wear your pajamas then. You can wear your pajamas at the club. When I used to do it, they they'd have a cereal bar set up for the comics. Did they always have that? Did they That's ever have funny. that? Thing? I never heard that. That's really cool. That's because you're yeah. staying so late. It's time for breakfast, huh? I guess so. Or you know, well, I always saw in Seinfeld that he always ate a lot of cereal. I'm like, is that a, like a thing? Funny people like cereal because I do like cereal, but it's I don't know. I know. I don't know why she did that for us, but she did. Old Margie, she was nice. Um, okay, and then this is a lot, a quarter cup of cornstarch. Um, and you can use like arrowroot. What about you arrow could use arrowroot? arrowroot? Yeah, and I was also going to say that yes, arrowroot you could definitely use. Um, you got to start whisking this because then it turns into like cement if you don't. And uh, you could also use um, like chickpea flour, garbanzo bean flour. Um, but I like this. I think it kind of makes it crispy and it's hard to get the cauliflower crispy. Um, okay. Then you're also, you can do this now or you could do this later. You're also going to mix one tablespoon and set this aside. This is not going in this batter. You're just going to do one tablespoon of cornstarch. And one tablespoon of of flour. I like oat flour. You, you know, that's interesting, Lauren, that you put the cornstarch or if it was arrowroot right into the sauce. Because I always thought, at least with cornstarch, you, you have something hot and then you mix it with something cold, you, you know, and then you kind of put it in the other yeah. sauce. Well, this is more for like a batter. And you can see it dissolved it, because I had some other liquid in there. But this is, I am going to do that with the orange sauce, what you're talking about, making like a little slurry. Um, I'm going to do that to thicken the orange sauce, but this is more like a, like I said, I can't decide if I want to call this a batter or a marinade, um, but it's something that you coat the cauliflower in. Okay. And then you're just going to mix up, uh, like I said, a tablespoon of cornstarch and a tablespoon of some kind of flour. I prefer oat flour, put that aside. All right, and then you're just going to start battering up this cauliflower. It's a flying. The cauliflower is a flying. This is, you are right. This is like the world's biggest head of cauliflower. Dang. You're a big girl, cauliflower. 
Okay, and then I got a lid for this bad boy. So I could shake it, shake it like a Polaroid picture. Whoop, coming out a little, not leak proof, I'll tell you that much. I'm gonna give it a little stir. My God, I always make such a mess. Me too. We need somebody to clean up <sighs> after us. I do. I mean, I have the dog and I have a husband. I got two, two pretty good cleaning crews, but uh, does Charles do the dishes? Not really, but he does other things. He feeds the yeah. birds. He takes the trash out. He makes the bed. He has his own set of skills. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did you just say you have birds? Well, not not pet birds, but there's wild. Oh, outside. The yeah. And, you know, they're quite, I, I, they're, they're so little and they eat so much. When people yeah. eat like a bird, I don't think they've ever seen how much birds eat. So we have a we have a bird bath, and he has to clean it. I'm looking at they're, yeah. just, they're so cute. They have like little chests of they are. Um, it's so funny how they're you know talk about pecking order. Like they you know they sometimes shoo the other ones away, and then there's another set of birds that eat what falls down. I I don't know if those are doves or pigeons. I'm not a I'm not a bird expert, but there there are so many of them and hummingbirds too. He changes the hummingbird feeder. Oh yeah, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, because you have to boil the sugar for that. Water, right? So yeah, yeah, that yeah. is a whole thing. Oh, that's nice. I just love birds. They're so yeah, they're so free. <laughs> I yeah, I do like the saying "eat like a bird" because you know I think all of us who eat this way kind of eat surprisingly big portions. So maybe that is a good saying. We eat like birds, but big, big hungry birds. Um. Okay, I am making quite the mess. Let me clean up a little. Okay, so now in real life, I would let this sit three minutes. I mean, 30 minutes. You don't need to um, keep the lid on or whatever. Just like let it marinate. Give it a stir every once in a while and leave it for 30 minutes. It helps make it crunchier, but we don't have that. We don't have the luxury of time here. So what I would do then is Drain off that excess um, liquid at the bottom because there's going to be leftover marinade at the bottom. I'm actually going to save that because I'm actually, I will marinate this later or marinate something else. Oh, you know what? This was such a big head of cauliflower. I actually don't even have any marinade left. Okay. Normally, for a normal size head of cauliflower, you will have some liquid left and you'll drain that off like in a strainer. Um, and then you're gonna take that extra flour and cornstarch and you're going to just sprinkle it over just to give it a little more crunchy batter feel. You're gonna be surprised, like that didn't look like much of a batter, but that cornstarch really, really, um, crunches things up. Just give it a little toss. And I need to make sure you have clean hands for this dish because, you know, well, it'll you work a lot. Have you the trick that Lissa Maris and Chris Kendall, the raw food chefs do, where they freeze the cauliflower and defrost it, and then it, it gives it this really cool texture before you marinate it? Really? Because yeah, I've, I've tried it. It's really cool. Is it different than using frozen cauliflower? Because that always is so mushy. Probably not, but depending on the recipe, it's kind of a cool uh, thing. I mean, not, not that you would do it for this recipe. It's just made me think of it. I've done that before for other recipes. I I want to try that because, you know, it is hard to crisp up cauliflower. Um, but I always find that, like, if I, I don't like to use frozen cauliflower for recipes like that because it just it seems mushy. So I'm going to try and see if it comes out different. Maybe Maybe if you just, like, how long do they freeze it? I think at least overnight. Huh. Okay. I'm going to give it a whirl. I'll see. I mean, what you don't have to freeze the whole head. You know, you could freeze like one or two florets and see if you like the texture. Yeah. Or you can do half of it. I mean, what's, what's the big deal? Huh. Have, a, have a little adventure in your life. All right. Let me get rid of this. Um, okay. Now I'm going to do the tofu. And just so you can see the difference, it's really virtually the same recipe. Here's my bowl. 
Sorry, let me rinse out this bowl real fast. Yeah, it's pretty much the same recipe, but you don't have to use quite as much um, cornstarch in the tofu because it, tofu naturally crisps up. All right, now we'll do our tofu. Um, as I say in the recipe, I really like for this, the super firm tofu or extra firm, whatever they call it. I got this at Whole Foods. They have it at Trader Joe's. They have it at um, Natural Grocer. They have it at just all the general grocery stores. Um, and you're just gonna give it a pat with your clean dish towel. This is not. Um, instead of, ha so now you don't have to like drain it and squish it and, you know, go through all the hoops you have to go through with cauliflower generally. And it comes out really, really crispy. And so what I like to do is, depending on how thick it is, this one's not too thick, so I'm just going to cut it in half. Normally, you know, you cut it in, you can cut get like three layers out of it, but then you cut it in half, and then you cut it in half again, cut it in half again. It just keeps it a little more even, just for I'm still doing a terrible job at this. And you're using the regular <laughs> water pack tofu, not the not the uh, silken. Correct. This is extra, extra firm, or it's called extra firm. And definitely not silken. And like I was saying, extra firm is okay, but you really have to get the water out of it. You really, really have to drain it well. So this one, it just, you don't have to go through all of that. So it's just nice and it's firm. Um, okay, now we'll make the marinade for this, which is, again, very, very similar. So we're just going to use four tablespoons of Bragg liquid aminos. One, two, three, four. That's a big bottle. It seems like everything in Texas is bigger, huh? It's all big. Your hair, your tofu, your cauliflower. <laughs> it's all big. I know it is. Well, I go through so much. You know, I cook so much. Like just to make this recipe of several times to try it out, you know, go through quite a bit. Um, and then two tablespoons of rice vinegar. and two tablespoons of cornstarch. That's all you need for that, instead of a big old quarter cup. One, two, and then like I said, give it a whisk right away. It turns into, turns into like cement if you let it sit for a second. Okay, and then you just throw the tofu in there. How long do you have to marinate it for, for optimal results? Uh, 30 minutes. So you're just going to give it a big old stir. Just leave it for 30 minutes. It's really not long. And, you know, normally, I think I've said this before, I'm so impatient and also generally hungry when I'm cooking. A lot of times I really don't um, do the whole wait time. You could get away with not waiting with the tofu, but with the cauliflower, really wait the 30 minutes and stir it up and make sure it gets, you know, marinated. Um, all right, so for this, you don't have to do the extra flour and, um, and um, cornstarch at the end. This is just good to go like this. So that'll sit for a minute. Okay, now, if you have an air fryer, that is my recommendation. Now, I'll show you what I don't have that's big in Texas, my air fryer. Um, I think I have like a first generation, my husband got this for me. So I have this Phillips. It's a really good air fryer, but it's small. The basket is really small. And if you crowd it too much, um, it's not gonna cook up really well. So a lot of times what I do, and especially I do this when I'm testing recipes, is I do part of it in the air fryer and part of it in the oven. If you're doing the oven, you'll do a baking sheet covered in parchment paper. Um, 
at 450 for the tofu only has to cook for um, 20 minutes in the oven, 12 minutes in the air fryer. And the cauliflower cooks for uh, at 450, like 25 to 28 minutes in the oven and only about 15 minutes in the air fryer. So you can see, I really haven't loaded it up too high. I have like a good layer and then maybe a little extra uh, in there. And then the rest I would do on a baking sheet or if I have time, I'll do a couple of, you know, separate rounds of this. I'll cook this, take it out, do the next round. So that's how I would do that. Cook that in my air fryer. Same with the tofu, I would cook it in the air fryer, but um, you know, just as good in the oven, maybe not quite as crispy. Okay, so, oh, is this hot? Dang. All right, I already had it going in the oven. Where's my oven mitt? Okay, I just did a little bit of tofu because this is what was left over, but I kind of overcooked this. Some of it got a little brown. Um, I actually cooked this in the air fryer. I think it just got extra brown when I had it in the oven warming. But, you know, you can see it gets, it gets pretty crispy, especially some of these pieces. Ooh, mm, I love it. Oh God, it tastes delicious. Okay, so this is ready to go from a very small head of cauliflower. Um, Cook these guys later. All right. Now we're going to make the orange sauce. I'm going to clean up a little here. Have you ever thought about cooking it in the air fryer? Yeah. That's what I was saying that I actually, I just showed you, I cooked it in the air fryer. Um, it comes out better in the air fryer, honestly. I'm just cleaning up my bowl. Yeah, it actually comes up better in the air fryer if you, but I know not everybody has one. But if you do, it's it's definitely better. Um, just comes out crispier. Now that is something I do use every day is my air fryer. I probably use my Vitamix and my air fryer every single day. Um, I know the air fryer might not be the healthiest thing because probably has some great, not great nonstick stuff in there. Maybe Teflon, I don't even know what. I kind of just don't even want to look into it to be honest. And I know when you get things like really brown and crisp like that, it's also sometimes they say not good for you, but the truth is, you know, especially eating this way, you kind of have to pick and choose and I got to make things crispy without oil. So it, it happens. Um, it's still oh, way better, whatever possible you know, negative consequences of the air fryer, which I don't even know really if they've proven it. Because I, I no. was to Dr. Gregor once and he sent me an article. He said only if you air fry sardines, um, it's still better than eating animal products or oil anytime. Sardines. Yeah. He sent me this funny article about air frying in the medical literature because I had asked him early on when people were bashing air fryer and he said no. And he says microwaves are safe too, you know? Really? Pressure cookers. Yeah. Okay. That's really good news. Um, because I even like, I used to have this rice cooker that had like Teflon or something not great in it. And I got like a new stainless rice yeah, cooker. You can get, and then I, but you can get ceramic ones, you know? Yeah. Well, I got a stainless one and then I got the um, Instapot, which is stainless. So I'm set on that. But like I said, you know, you gotta, you, you, you'll make yourself crazy and well, that's good to know that Dr. Gregor said that. Dr. Gregor said it. That's good enough for me. Yep. Sold. He knows everything. He's so funny. Talk about, boy, I wonder, could you get him to do the comedy class? Oh, he'd be hilarious. I'm trying to He's, get Dr. Goldhammer. You know, these guys are already funny people. Yeah, Dr. Goldhammer is funny. He doesn't even try. No. <laughs> Same with Dr. Gregor. I don't, do you think Dr. Gregor tries to be funny? Well, they're they're very good presenters. They're, they they're are very engaging. I love them. I love them. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is my orange zest. You're going to do. I I wash this really well, and you're just going to do the zest of one orange. I have my microplane. 
and I won't make you watch me zest this whole thing, but this is how that goes. Just zest. Uh, uh, it smells so good. I love the smell of orange. Mm. Yeah. That's yummy. Yeah. So you're just going to zest this whole thing. Takes a minute. Sorry, guys. You're microplaning, though. You're technically not zesting, right? You're microplaning, is, aren't you? What's the difference between microplaning and zesting? Well, I, I think I think the microplane, which is what you're using, gets finer shavings, and it's often used for things like nutmeg. Zesting, it's a smaller tool, and you get like these long shreds. Oh. I think so. I think there's a slight difference. Oh. Well, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing. You know, you know I have. Oh, I'm sorry. What? California balsamic has a mandarin orange balsamic that I've used like in Asian inspired dishes like this. It's very Oh, good. I would like that. I think. Yeah. You would. I think I'll maybe get some. Yeah. They have really good products. Um, okay. I need to look into that because I thought that's like what you're talking about is like, I know what you're talking about, like what you would put on an old fashioned or in a drink, like a big, yeah, like a long slice of thread it. of lemon, of lemon, lime or orange. It's just, it's, it's, you kind of like almost like you're shaving. Okay. We'll have to look into that. I don't but, know, it's, it's potatoes, potatoes. Well, whatever you do, get the little skin shredded up. Um, and I love this microplane. This really does the trick because I used to have some other things that weren't quite as good and I don't remember how much this cost, but whatever it was, I don't think it was more than $10, $15. It was really worth it. Um, okay, getting towards the end. And you zest it or whatever you're doing to it first, getting all the skin off, because then you're <laughs> gonna use the inside. And then once you've cut it, you can't really do that. Okay, so see, I got a big pile of that over here. I'll put that to the side. And then we are going to need for the orange sauce um, three quarters cups of orange juice that I'm going to get out of here. But let me first let me get something else to put this in. <laughs> my Texas size measuring cup. Uh, I think that my cousin Sherry was commenting on this. It has, you know, it holds four cups, but I'm actually just going to do all the whisking in here because then I'll pour it into my saucepan and it has a little spout. So it makes it easy to pour out of here. So I like to mix things up in here. Okay, so for the orange sauce, we are going to need two tablespoons of cornstarch. Wait, hold on. And two tablespoons of water. That's to make the slurry that we're gonna put aside. Uh, what Chef AJ was talking about earlier, where you mix that in later to thicken it up. So let me just measure that out. Two tablespoons of cornstarch. Let me get some water, my filtered water. Two tablespoons of water. One. Two. Here's my baby whisk. Here's my baby whisk. I'm just gonna whisk it up. It gets like cement very quickly, so you have to whisk it right away. Yeah, whisk it. Whisk it good. Yeah, that's the only thing you have that's not giant size. I know. I got a tiny baby whisk. I use it all the time because you know what? You can't get your big whisk in that. I mean, you can, but I like my baby whisk. Okay, my right, not Texas, that's my Delaware size whisk. Okay, now uh, two tablespoons of rice vinegar. Surprise, surprise. I think we've used that in everything. Okay, got that going. Um, three quarters cup of orange juice. Okay, so I have a, I have a, big old juicer, but I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to use my lemon limey thing. Um, I saw one of somebody commented the last time I used this. Oh, I wish I would have known that you cut the ends off. So you cut it in half and then you cut the other end off and it helps get more juice out. She's like, I wish I would have known that before I threw my 
lemon lime juicer thing away makes it go easier. Um, I'm going to go ahead and guess that we are definitely going to need more than one. I'm going to cut a couple up, but I just buy like a big bag of organic oranges for this. Kind of slice them into, you know, kind of quarter it up. So you have about that much. Want to get them a little bit tiny for this. Let's see. And then I just put it in there. Oh, you know what? I need to measure this out. I'm going to put it in my one cup because we need three quarters cup. So I'll be able to measure it out pretty well here. Get my little compost garbage. Do you keep a little compost garbage or bucket when you're but we have like um the way our, our trash can is set up, it's like one in front and one in the back. You know what I mean? Like when you oh yeah, yeah. It. Yeah. So you could just throw it in there, the compost. Yep. That's nice. Does your city pick up the compost? I do you... don't think they do. Yeah, we have to take it into our own hands. Oh. Because in Austin, they pick up your compost. They have like a little compost bin that they pick up. And then Sometimes you can get it back. Sometimes you can go like pick up free compost every once in a while, like maybe once a year. Um, and you can pick up free mulch. They'll mulch your Christmas trees. And um, so, yeah, I always, when your Chris, when my Christmas tree gets picked up, um, then I go and get, they mulch the Christmas trees and I get free mulch at the place where they do that in Austin. Hey, Christmas trees, aren't you Jewish? Oh, yeah. Well, ask my husband. The I, only thing, what did he say about me? The only, the person who loves the Christmas tree the most is a little Jewish girl who will, never got one. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> because my mom made me a Hanukkah bush one time. Did, did, did you have a Hanukkah bush or anything no, stupid like didn't. that? Was stupid. One time I wanted to be uh, uh, celebrate Christmas, so I hung a Christmas stocking, and the next day they put like, I don't know, like really cold or something in my stocking you know like no oh, your parents yeah they didn't want me to do that or your aunt <laughs> yeah well you know when I grew up it, it was just us everybody was Jewish in my family and but now my husband's Catholic so I was like oh perfect we are getting a Christmas tree because kids dad needs a Christmas tree and you know of course he's like uh I'm he's like the biggest Jew in the house we always like even though he's Catholic I think um I might have told this story before, but for Passover, you know, Passover is preceded by the Seder, which takes forever. You're reading out of the Haggadah and or Haggadah, however you pronounce. Some people pronounce it that way, but it's like a, a prayer book and you're retelling the story of Passover when the Jews uh, were slaves in Egypt and blah, blah. It takes forever. And then you eat. So this year or this last year or two years ago, I said, I found this thing online. We're going to do the five minute Seder. And my daughter's husband, who's Catholic, and my husband, who's Catholic, was like, five minutes Seder? That's sacrilege. No, we're having a whole full Seder. The both of them were complaining the whole time. I'm like, okay, you Catholic people. Uh, oh, do you get to say? But, yeah. Okay. So now you see, I squeezed three quarters cup of orange juice. It really didn't take that long. Nice and fresh. I used. I don't even know, maybe three oranges. Um, all right, we got that. What else do we have? Quarter cup of Bragg liquid amino. Or you could use coconut amino, the kind we talked about last time that has very little sodium. I uh, forget which one it is. I should have looked it up. And let's see. Um, Okay, so this is where you can choose. You're either going to use a third cup of maple syrup or just a quarter cup of date syrup. The date syrup surprisingly makes it like richer and sweeter, which I didn't think would be the case. But I've made it both ways, and I'll tell you the truth. I know it's not as healthy, but I like the maple syrup flavor better. I generally don't use a full third cup, but almost to the rim, somewhere between a quarter and a third. Um, oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised. Um, four tablespoons of white vinegar. Okay, here's my Texas size vinegar. 
I already poured it out because I was like, oh, it's such a thing to get four tablespoons out of that. But I use that for everything, cleaning, cooking. I love my vinegar. So where is it? I already poured it out ahead of time. So I didn't have to struggle with pouring four tablespoons out of that giant monster. So four tablespoons of vinegar, um, the zest or whatever, peel of an orange, throw that in there that we already did. Three cloves of minced garlic. I already minced that up. Um, uh, tablespoon of grated ginger root. Well, I guess you could call it grated orange instead of zest. Um, so you can either just use like a spoon to peel the skin off of this or a regular peeler. And I already just peeled it off. So tablespoon of ginger. I'm just going to use my microplane again. You uh, know what I have to use, Lauren, is those, um, you get them at like Trader Joe's. There's these little cubes of frozen ginger. There's nothing in them. There's no oil. And it's so easy because then you just pop one or two out when you need ginger. Oh my God. I'm learning. Wait, so how, how is it measured out? Are they like in tablespoons? Well, well it, it tells you on the thing, like the equivalent, but usually I just use two and they're, they, it's almost like ice cubes and they're very cool because I like ginger, but I don't use enough of it to warrant me to keep buying it. And it's, it's very convenient. Well, I happen to use a lot of ginger and, but I like that anything that's like actually fresh and you know doesn't have extra ingredients so you get that at trader joe's in the frozen you section. you get it at trader joe's in the frozen section yep oh hell i'm getting me some of that yeah and they, they have it in garlic too you just have to check because some really it has oil sometimes it doesn't well okay well you can see that looks like about a tablespoon that's um you are full of so you know i come on here to teach and i always learn isn't that just, that's how it goes. You know, it goes both ways. Everybody always has good advice for me, especially you. Um, okay, and then just like a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flake, if you like just a little tiny kick, a little spice. And then we're just gonna, whoops, whisk it up. Oh, it smells so good, okay. All right, so now we're just going to, let me, oh, so much mess over here. I'm gonna take my little slurry over here. Put my stove on. Okay, let me move my camera. Okay, heat up my pan a little bit. Okay, let's see. So now we're really just gonna cook this up. Let's see, did I get a good shot of it? All right, I'm just gonna pour this in here. Let it boil. Let it boil, baby. Let it boil. I always use my spatula, even though there's probably nothing left in there, but like every little last bit. All right. So we'll let that boil for a second. Get rid of some of this. Oh my gosh. Lauren, which air fryer do you have? I, it's called a Phillips and it's really, let me get it. It's, I was showing, it's like a first generation. I had it a long time. Yeah, so the, the basket kind, the basket yeah, kind. Sure, the basket good. Kind. I have the go wise. Those are very good for people that don't have the space or can't afford the Breville. They're great. The go wise or this? Yeah, just the, any type this. of basket ones. Yeah, I've yeah, yeah. Them, I've seen them very affordably, as low as thirty nine dollars at uh, like Sam's Club. You know? Oh and, wow! So they're not. Well, I've had this a long time, and I I know it was definitely not like that price like that, but I'm sure they've come down a ton since but um yeah i mean i've had that ever since i went 
have they been out that long? Eight years? Because I know I've had it like since I went um, whole food plant based because that was like my husband bought it for me like for the first probably Hanukkah. Um, yeah, we do Hanukkah and Christmas at the Burnick house. You definitely want to be a Burnick child. Um, so yeah, I think that was like definitely one of the first things he got me was an air fryer. So I love it. I use it all the time. Okay, let's see. Starting to boil over here. All right. Let's see. Give it a little whisk. I'm just going to re... Where's my baby whisk? Baby whisk, where'd you go? Little baby. Don't worry, I have a big sister whisk. Oh. This is medium whisk. This is little baby whisk, big sister. Okay, I'm getting this another stir because that uh, cornstarch that's been sitting there is has sunk into the bottom, it's getting hard. So I wanna whisk it again before I put it in my stuff that's now boiling. Okay, so that's boiling. And now I'm gonna add this, my slurry. Slurry. My slurry, slurry with the fringe on top. I was thinking this. We are, See? that's why we You're gotta psychic. do improv. See, if we were doing improv, we'd I be did improv go. with you. I know, one time. You know, you a traditional slurry is like white flour, right? Right. I think so. And then I'm turning this down to like a medium low heat. And you want to stir this quite a bit while it's, while it's going. I'll show you and it'll start to thicken in a second. Yeah, when I, when I think of slurry with a fringe on top or slurry with a fringe on top, I always think of, what do you think of? Do you think of something? I think of the, the, the musical. Oh, I, what, that's from Oklahoma, right? I believe so. I so. Well, I always think of um, when Harry met Sally and he's doing the karaoke, he's, they're singing slurry with a fringe on top and in comes his ex-wife. And then he's like, and I'm singing sorry with a fringe on top Funny. in front of Ira. <laughs> okay, so you could see it's starting to boil and thicken. See how it's thickening up? But you want to keep a good eye on this and keep keep a watch and it's just about ready. I think that uh let me put my light on over my stove and see if you could see this better because I have a light shining in here. Is that better? Just one of my kitchen lights is shining bright over here. But yeah, you can see it's starting to thicken. See? What do you serve it over? Like rice, for example? Yep, I do. I serve it over rice. I'm going to show you in just a sec. All right, so now, yeah, this is pretty thick. Might give it like one more second. Um, so this is the thing. Okay, I'm not talking about the head of cauliflower I just made because that thing is like gazunga. That's crazy, it's so big. But if you had a normal head of cauliflower, or you made a normal thing, I generally say, don't pour the cauliflower or the tofu into the sauce, pour the sauce over the cauliflower or the tofu, because you don't want to have too much sauce, then it's gross. Um, so I'm going to say this is finished. This back over here. I really need a camera crew, Chef AJ. When are you going to send a camera crew to my house? Uh, don't they have <laughs> in Austin somewhere? <laughs> I am sure they do. Oh my God, my phone is hot. That might have been a bad idea. <laughs> okay. So. Here's my stuff that I already made, my cauliflower and my tofu. And I do mix it together sometimes. Why does it do this when I 
you know what? It does this every time I move my camera back. Oh, I bet because it's hot. I just figured out. You know, my phone does this every time I move it back and I, I've just cooked over the stove and then I switch to my phone. It shows the last shot of um, when I'm cooking over the stove. And I just figured out it's because I probably just blew up my phone. It's boiling hot. So I guess I might have to be more careful with that. Okay, well, at least I solved that mystery. I'm always like, why is that happening? Okay, so now I'm gonna take this thickened sauce and you could even let it go a little longer, but it's pretty thick. And I'm gonna pour it over. I just like to spoon it over so that it gets enough, but it's not, oh God, it smells so good. And I have lots of sauce left, which is good because I'm going to cook up all that other stuff. And like I said, you can do a little mix of tofu and cauliflower, or you could just do the cauliflower, or you could just do the tofu. Then I'm going to serve it over, Chef AJ guessed it right, rice. Do you cook your rice on the stove, in the pressure cooker, or in a rice cooker? You know, I have all of the things you can have, and half the time, most of the time, I end up cooking it on the stove, which is kind of maddening, but I don't, I just think it's easier than pulling out all that equipment. I just have my stove going like 20 hours a day anyway, it seems like. Um, but yeah, I probably, most of the time, just cook it on the stove. And then I slice up a little bit of scallion to uh, to garnish it. You know, I like a nice garnish. Let's do a little scallion. And I like to cut from both ends. I like the green part and I like the white part. So good. And I've also, you know, I, I like to add vegetables to everything. I've also... Um, steamed up some bok choy and thrown that in there and it was delicious. So that's a good thing you can do too, especially if you're just doing the tofu. I mean, you don't need to do that if you're doing the cauliflower, although it's delicious. Um, that, and then the last thing I would do is toast up a little bit of sesame seeds to put on there. I'm not actually not gonna toast them just for the sake of time and you ever put a, you ever put a few scallions on your food that yep that's what I'm doing right now I just chopped My them favorite. up and putting some scallions and some sesame seeds and let me see if my phone's cooled down nope it's still hot boy yeah that's so weird okay so there there she blows that I don't have access to my that's it. You got your little orange there. You can put your little orange slice on top. You got your scallions and your sesame seeds. Yeah, how good that looks. You it's yummy. Done it again. Mandarin, orange, tofu, and cauliflower plant-based classics reinvented by Lauren Burnick. It looks delicious. Let me tell you if it's good. Mm -hmm. I already knew it, but it's good. It's mm -hmm. your food. I wish, I wish you could make me some. We come to my house. Or you come I'll to make my you house. everything. I know. Kitchen is okay. beautiful. Thank you so much. Now, October, you come on early in the month, the second week. What what October? There's not really holidays per se, because the Jewish holidays yeah. are past, uh, but it's before Halloween. So are there any traditional foods you can think of for fall that are classic? Well, you know, um I was I might. I don't know if I'm going to make this. I, you know, I haven't really made any desserts on here. Oh, that's not true. I made a Texas sheet cake. Um, but I, I made an orange chocolate mousse the other day, and it was really good. Um, I might make that with something else. I don't know. I have to think about it. Let's see. October, it's not a it's not a real holiday month, is it? You know? No. Unless you do something in a pumpkin for Halloween or something. Yeah, I could maybe think of that. Put some orange chocolate mousse in a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little gross. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I'll think about it. Well, I hope you're writing these down because, you know, you're going to yes. have a book by the time we're done with this. Yes, absolutely. 
I am writing it down. Thank you, Chip AJ. I love mm, thank you. Love being so with you. So fun talking to you. So fun talking to you. Thanks everybody for watching. Yep. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 2 p.m. Pacific time for Feeling Great with Lisa and Nate for a vegan, oil-free, and raw Mexican fiesta. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.